DJ Purtu Beer Review. Well, time for another Summer Crusher beer. That's right, I've already got my workout on so I can keep putting the beer down and keep the gut off. And I'm looking for that awesome session beer that says, man, that tastes really good. I can keep drinking it. So today we're gonna have a classic sort of in that kind of summer beer and mm, sessionable range kind of style. And from whom are you going to acquire said beer? We're gonna get it from Bell's Brewery Inc. out of Kalamazoo, Michigan, US of A. Yay, yay. And who, what beer is it from them today? It's there. Bell's Oberon Ale. That's right, it's a wheat beer. It's a summer sort of classic ale that's been brewed since 2002. It clocks in at 5.8% ABV and 10 IBUs. What are they, what they're using for malts and hops? I don't know, besides wheat, because it's a wheat ale. But I do know that it uses their Bell's House yeast, which is supposed to have its own unique fruity and spicy esters. So let's crack the top on this exceedingly fresh can of Bell's Brewery Inc.'s Bell's Oberon Ale. Get it in the glass and tell you what's up. Ah, with said libation. Ah, nice crack off the top. Got the sort of wit beer glass here, which is what this kind of is. You know? Yeah, look at that hazy biatch. This is unpasteurized and unfiltered, by the way. And in its day when it was put out, there wasn't really a whole lot of unpasteurized and unfiltered wheat ales out there. Since 2002, you know what? Wow. Um, this is this beer is kind of in the vein of like Hoogarten and those beers. So let's see what the off the appearance and all that shit. You know what we're gonna do? It's part of the drinking the beer thing. Anyway, yeah, I'm digressing. You're, you're not surprised. Anyway, it's a hazy golden sort of yellow color. We got a solid finger and a half of super tightly packed bubbles. When I swirl it, yeah, we're gonna get some nice glass lacing on this. We already are, as a matter of fact. And there's mm, nah, maybe the tiniest tiniest appearance of alcohol lakes, but they're they're pretty much not there, but at 5.8%, we're not expecting that, are we? But gorgeous looking sort of wheat ale or wheat beer in the glass. Let's see what's up with the aroma. It's citrusy, real yeast forward, fruity, spicy, just like they say on the can. A little bit herbaceous. Maybe, maybe almost a little of that like basil note I've been smelling and stuff after, after ever since my buddy Joe at Joe's Arcade, who also reviews beers. If you haven't checked out his channel, do so check out Joe's Arcade. Anyway, he kind of tuned my brain into that that basil smell, and I'm getting it on things now. Maybe it's a subliminal thing, but I'm really smelling it because I could never tag that aroma in my head with with what it was. But anyway, thanks for that, Joe. By the way, anywho, um, <clears throat> I digress again. <laughs> That's what I do. Citrusy, like bready malt in there, spicy, fruity, herbaceous with those basil notes. It smells damn good. We, but beers and all this kind of thing aren't super complex in aroma or taste category. They're meant for one thing. That's tasting good and crushing. So let's see what it tastes like now. Cheers! Mmm, nice. Just like the aroma, it's citrusy, but... To me, I get like a lemony taste, and that lemony taste is like right at the front of your tongue to almost the middle. Then the wheat malt comes in, that sweet wheat malt, and the spicy fruity esters from their house yeast are in there. <clears throat> it's got nice layers of flavor. The alcohol is totally hidden, and that citrusy lemony note really hangs in there. Generally, that goes away, but this is almost like you've taken a whip beer and you've put a bit of lemon in it. You know, like if you had, I don't know, Blue Moon, you know, which is a, <clears throat> excuse me, a wit beer like that, or Who Garden, and you put some fruit into it. But this is all hop driven. So I can see why people have been digging this beer so long. This is a 2002 recipe that stood the test of time. I like the fact that it's in, in pounder cans. The more beers I drink, I like that 16 ounce format. It's, it's just enough. Sometimes 22 ounces is more than you want of said beer in one sitting, but you drink it because you paid for the bottle. And especially if the beer's meh. So that had extra 22 ounces can be a challenge at times. Super easy to drink, super crushable, and it brings really nice flavor for a fairly bland sort of style kind of beer that, of that wit beers are. They're usually mainly yeast driven and wheat driven in flavor. And this has that nice twist of the hop in there that's given that lemony and herbaceous thing. As I drink it more, the herbaceous note grows. Though I got the aroma of the basil, I don't get it in the taste. I get just more like a general herbal kind of flavor in there. But man, you can see I'm crushing this down. There's awesome glass lacing on it, just like it um, you know, exhibited when I poured it in there. Tasty beer. So, what do we grade a beer like this? Well, 
Rate Beer gives it an 88, solid B plus range. Beer Advocate gives it an 87, also solid B plus range. I'm going to give this beer a 90. I think for what it is, and the fact that its recipe has stood the test of time for so long, you know, we're talking 13 years now that the recipe at time of recording has been around and been out to the public. It's in a can format. I'm liking that too. It's bringing, but it's, the most important thing is it's bringing that little bit of extra flavor that separates itself from the other wheat ales out there and you don't have to add fruit into it. You can make it hop driven and really I think that's the, the intention. You make a beer good enough that you don't have to slam fruit in to make it taste better. So. I imagine a lot of you guys agree like that. Yeah? Yeah, anyway. So, have you had this beer? Many people have. It's been around a long time. Let me know what you think, because I like to quid pro quo and the back and forth, because that, along with copious amounts of Bell's Oberon Ale, put my happy face on. So, also, what makes me really happy is when you think locally, drink locally, and support the craft move beer movement, because that combined with rating, commenting, and subscribing, if you have not done so already, is really cool. It's also awesome when you smash that like button. So to the next DJ BrewTube, I'm going to kick back. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my bells over on ale and give you something you've been waiting for. That's right. <laughs> it's coming. Okay, a big...